Hello. <clears throat> well, today I'm here to talk about a new film that is in theaters at the moment. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of those. Um, but, um, <clears throat> considering I did the previous film some years ago, uh, I thought it was appropriate to at least uh, talk a bit about uh, Death on the Nile. Um, the uh, sequel to Murder on the Orient Express. Um, basically, you know, if you've seen the previous adaptation or uh, of the film or or of the book or read the book, <clears throat> you'll know what the premise is about. And um, yeah, the, the uh, Hercule Poirot uh, goes uh, to Egypt. spends time there and you know we also meet various uh, key people of course who are going to be on a, uh, a, a, a <clears throat> Gaborda big like uh, like pleasure cruise essentially and uh, uh, along the Nile and uh, a, a murder happens, of course, and um, I have uh, a page with the cast, because some of the character names are uh, quite interesting, and I wouldn't want to, you know, uh, just uh, speak that, uh, or mispronounce their names, like, uh, uh, Bach is back, uh, played by Tom Bateman, and of course, uh, Kenneth Brenna is Hercule Poirot. Um, Annette Benning is uh, Euphema, uh, Bach's mo uh, mother and uh, painter. Uh, Gal Gadot uh, plays uh, Lynette uh, Ridgway Doyle, uh, and Army Hammer plays Simon Doyle, who of course marries her. We see in the beginning of the film how the two met and how he was engaged to. Uh, Jackie de Belfort, uh, played by Emmy, Emma Mackey, and um, how he breaks off, he basically breaks off the engagement and to her, and then they get, he marries Annette, and uh, things go from there, and uh, and in uh, the very beginning, we actually see. Uh, World War One, a young Hercule Poirot. Uh, you know, he, they're all uh, his uh, like squad. You know, having to go to, the, go to the, uh, uh, having to wait, and then to for a while, uh, and uh, Poirot. Uh, Realizes something and how you know, like every day, like uh, like the birds are flying, and how there's like a certain break and a perfect time for them to you know attack them when they wouldn't expect it, and uh, so they do this and uh, are successful, um, and you know, like the Germans, you know, retreat and. We see a man, you know, Perot's uh, captain, is a uh, has this famous mustache that Pro, uh, you know, will have. But Pro at the beginning of the film is clean shaven, and um, the captain dies because of the tripwire. And you know, you we also see um, Catherine. You know the woman that he loves, and uh, you know we see her in the flesh uh, in the film, uh, not just like a picture that he has of her. And uh, we see she visits him, and then he in the hospital, and uh, he has a wound here, and uh, talking and how uh, saying how she loves him and how she loved him because of this. You see the wound, and she says. Well, what he'll do is just grow a mustache, and that's basically 
like the, the origin of how he got his mustache. Now, now I haven't read the book, um, so I have no clue if, um, or any of the books of Perot, and how if any of this is accurate to, as to why he has the mustache. But if it isn't in the books, I think that is very unique and interesting. Um, you know the. Uh, Overall, the film itself is really good, um, I, or um, at least I enjoyed it. I will say that I. It spends quite some time since I've seen the original Death on the Nile. Same with, it's been a while since I've seen, you know, the original Murder on the Orient Express. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I know I enjoy the uh, original adaptations of. Of those, um, and I enjoy these new ones that Brenna is doing. Um, uh, there's a decent amount of humor in here. Not that you know humor doesn't exist with in this world uh, to begin with. You know, uh, you know. Um, having thought back, you know, I do recall humorous moments uh, of the other films. Um, But you know, uh, uh, these these films are uh, very good. I think they're uh, well done. I, it's interesting how, uh, for s some of the critics, in terms of the critical thing, how they uh, when they are critiquing uh, uh, these films, and for this one in particular, I thought it was interesting how they say it looks so good in terms of like the visuals and like the period of that the film takes place in. You know, and it's it's like they look so good to a fault, which is interesting. Like, you know, wouldn't you want them to be as accurate as possible? Um, wouldn't you um, want the book or the film to be as close to the source material as possible? Um, that's often something that people do uh, complain about with adaptations. Is you know they're not as good as book. Um, sometimes books take too many liberties to the point where while well, maybe here and there you don't omit you omit some things or maybe you could make something more interesting because perhaps what's there like something might be very important in the book but perhaps if you were to translate that onto screen it would be quite you know fairly boring um, and perhaps it you know perhaps with the story you know, you might need something fairly interesting to happen. Um, you know, uh, you know, maybe it's been uh, a good while since anything really of interest has occurred, and so it might be that you could take that opportunity to take this moment that's in the book, which is important, and uh, like for the end, and instead of just uh, having it. Uh, as is, as a, a basic uh, book to script to screen translation, you just you punch it up a bit, perhaps, to make it more interesting. Um, stuff like that usually isn't all that. Uh, when people do look at liberties, uh, do people really complain about? Um, you know, it's it's very. Uh, It's, it's very interesting. Um, I, I also think that perhaps it's that, you know, with the original adaptations of uh, these books, it could be that people have so much attachment to them, and, you know, rightfully so, they were all well made and had a great cast and everything. In both films, you know, I know Albert Finney was didn't continue after Murder on the Orient Express, but, you know, that Peter, you, you sort of... Uh, Peter Ustinov, yeah, apologies, wanted to make sure I had the name correct, and I don't know 
know, you know, I, I, I didn't want to pronounce the name properly, but you know, you know, he was good, and there's been so many people who played the uh, the part real well. I think Kenneth Brenner does a very good job. He's also a very good director. Uh, I think everybody in here was really good. Um, Russell Brand uh, plays uh, uh, the doctor, uh, and uh, when that's former lover, and, you know he, it, you know, he does a very good job. Uh, very serious uh, part for him. Um, obviously, you know he's known for you know comedy and uh, things of that nature, uh, but he does a very good job with the film. Um, and this film was supposed to, of course, uh, be released in 2020. Of course, we all know why it didn't happen, but then also, in addition to, you know, the virus, and how half of the world wasn't open, um, uh, Disney was, uh, negotiating, of course, ensuring, like, the Uh, 20th Century Fox, which produced Murder on the Orient Express and this film, though it's now 20th Century Studios. Um, you know, they, of course, you know, they purchased uh, Fox, and, you know, no doubt they were still, because uh, they filmed the, uh, this film prior, so they didn't have to really do any reshoots. It was scheduled to come out, like, in uh, November of 2020, if I recall correctly. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting how you know Disney uh, now having ownership of everything of Foxes and how they were just gonna uh, go with the release and all, especially with Disney Plus, um, which apparently was a reason why they actually bought 20th Century Fox to begin with uh, was you know if you know that their streaming service did well, they would like to have even more than just Disney stuff, so they thought acquiring Fox would be good because you can have all the other films and shows that uh, they have that would be fine for streaming on, on their uh, service uh, exclusively. <clears throat> so from that, uh, yeah, that also I guess had a uh, hand in the delay of the release because um, you know clearly they didn't want to go direct to streaming, you know, it's a pretty big movie, and they would want to have it at least see some sort of financial return, uh, for sure, and not just, you know, eventually Blu-ray sales, because I know, like, uh, uh, you know, some of the, you know, I know, I, I believe some of their stuff that's streaming has, uh, they have Blu-ray uh, releases of them those films out so you know uh, there is that um, but you know no doubt they want uh, ticket sales uh, also and so one thing they you know did was probably look to see when would be a good time to release it I remember it was supposed to be November 2021 don't know why it didn't they didn't release it then I think that would have been a pretty good time but Whatever. Um, yeah, it's a it's, it's a very good film. Um, again, I haven't seen the original in quite some time. The original uh, adaptation um, of this, as is well known, uh, Peter Yanovich. Peter Unisov. I don't know why I keep on a say Unovich. I don't know why it's. Uh, I don't know. It's just my you know my brain doesn't want to. I think it's trying to. Uh, like I, I I see the guy's face, uh, but yet for whatever reason I want to say someone else's name. Um, but you know uh, the film is good. I think. You know, fine movie. You know, 
may not necessarily be film of the year uh, exactly, but it's a movie where if you like uh, uh, stuff like uh, Hercule Poirot, uh, kind of mystery uh, films and things of that nature, then it's a very good film. Uh, it's very entertaining. Um, I think uh, you know it's worth seeing at least once, you know, just to see what this version is like and whether or not you think it's better or uh, on par with uh, the original uh, version. And, you know, of course, that's up to everyone's, you know, opinion. Um, I'm not going to say it's better than the original. Same with Murder on the Orient Express. It's been a while since I've seen those, and I probably should, uh, you know, see about getting them. No doubt they would be, you know, not too expensive, like on DVD or Blu-ray. Um, might be even stream somewhere just so I could uh, uh, rewatch them uh, fairly quickly uh, and see uh, how the film holds up, how they hold up, and like uh, to this this version is actually uh, better or not. But yeah. That's really all I uh, have uh, to say. Uh, good film, entertaining. Uh, cast is good. Um, I would like to see Kenneth Breda make one more film, just to you know, make a trilogy at least. You know, he's he even said like you know, there's so many books with the character and so many things that you know, you know, you could make uh, many movies. And I'd like to see him at least make one more. Just make at least a trilogy, basically. Um, one thing, though, I will say that was a bit disappointing is the fact that uh, at the end of Murder on the Orient Express, uh, they say like he's told there's been a murder on the Nile, so it's assumed like oh okay, obviously this is this that's the, what the next movie is going to be, which of course we get, but there's no real resolution to that. You know why? It's just thrown in there as sort of like a reference to you know another famous story with Hercule Poirot, um, which isn't bad, but, you know, I, I would have liked a little payoff with that. It's a little uh, disappointing uh, that such doesn't happen. Um, but, you know, it, uh, uh, film is good, you know, regardless of little, that little uh, thing. Yeah, I wish paid off, but, um, yeah, very good. Recommend it to people who enjoy Hercule Poirot and Agatha Christie uh, mysteries and such. Um, it's at least a, a, a worth a watch once, at least, I would think. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, I know I'm, this is a little late, but, you know, I want a bit of a break. after a bit, just so I can, uh, you know, you know, feel a little more, like, recharged a bit, and that way it's not doing, I'm not doing this every single week, like, as a complete commitment, like, I gotta do it at least once or something, you know, uh, it's good to take breaks here and there, um, but anyway, hope all of you are having a great day, Hope you'll have a great weekend, and I know it's March now, and I know this is still February, but, you know, uh, whatever. Um, yeah. I hope all of you are doing well and are safe. Have a great weekend, and uh, hope you're having a great month also. Take care.